It's that time again. It's the Berkey and the Badger Board Game Babble Show. It's going to get wild. It's going to get wacky. It might even get a little zany. We're going to talk about board games in the board game industry. And, you know, we might talk about anything else we want to talk about. Hey, hey, hey. It's Berkey and it's the Badger live from Babel Lot. The Good King is here with the court gesture, and we are going to battle about a lot of fun things today. Oh, board game related. <laughs> board game things and other fun things. Isn't they this are. true? You are going to amuse me and everyone else. Is this not true, Sir Badger? Um. Um, I'll, I'll I'll dust off those those old jokes that I know and do my best to um entertain. But I'm I'm just hopefully going to inform people, um, uh, so they can make in you know their decisions for games. Oh, that was boring. I'm no, no, sorry. You're here to entertain us. I'm dusty. <laughs> There's not hey, much of it left. Very... It's so uh, very busy. well. We've been so busy with the Kickstarter, and you've been busy with all your sound stuff. It's like we feels like we haven't talked to each other for a long time. What's been happening in your world? Yeah, what's been happening in my world? Oh, wow, Oof. Um, it's that time of year where the garden just like explodes with color and stuff. Ooh, echoey, echoey. And so I've been fighting the garden in the spare time that I have in between projects. Um, and I have been winning, which is nice. And it's it's nice to see everything kind of growing. So I've been busy gardening as well as finishing off um, other little projects. So you may know of the... Oh, where is it? It's here. It's here. There's this Kemet soundtrack, which is now available to stream anywhere. You can right? listen to that. On Spotify and iTunes, Amazon, and in a hundred other places, YouTube as well. So, if you have Kemet or the new version of Kemet, Blood and Sand, you can put this on in the background and um, and play play along and just get more immersed into the board game. Um, and that's also available in uh, Sirenscape flavor as well. So, if you have a Sirenscape subscription. Uh, you can get it there, as well as the Titan soundtrack, which came out a bit earlier this year as well. So, yeah, it's all go, go, go. Started work on the Seventh Citadel soundtrack. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Um, there's not much to tell because I'm not allowed to tell anyone anything. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very, very kind of very uh, vague description of of what's going on, and so I am just collecting sounds which correspond to the, the the areas of the game and um starting to compose and uh send it all off to bruno and, and ludovic to um to to evaluate and, and and judge which area it will go in or if it goes in the bin so yes go 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 and uh that's me done but you you have uh, just had a, a, a quick break after having a hectic um, workload, haven't you, Sire? Well, you know how when you run a Kickstarter campaign, it is all in, baby. And that's like 40 days of gruel. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> it's, in, it's invigorating. It's incredibly exciting. And it's absolutely exhausting. <laughs> I literally, uh, the campaign really went well. I just... Uh, and so, so incredibly overwhelmed and grateful uh, to all of the media folks that, that help game shoppers talk about the project and signal boosted for us and, and all the media folks that, that, you know, shared our stuff, all the backers who came in and were so enthusiastic. I mean, we've, we have three, this is our third Kickstarter and three generations of backers that have come in and just love what we're doing. And, uh, we did 11 live Steamyard videos during the campaign with question and answers and had special guests on. And uh, it's a crazy amount of work. The amount, sometimes I'm answering 300 correspondences a day 
Um, yeah. It's just remarkable, and it's in social media here and there and everywhere. At the end of the campaign, um, I'm going to take a couple of days just to, to relax and recharge. And I actually went camping with my wife for two days out in uh, Maplewood State Park, had beautiful two days, and then it got cold down to like 40 degrees. <gasps> Nasty. Yeah. And, uh, but that day, we're going to talk about something later uh, on our not so good and uh, bad and ugly segment. Um, but I was locked in the camper the one day because it was just pretty cold, but <laughs> I was able to just uh, not do much. Read a couple Star Trek books and uh, what a joy that was just to rest. I don't really realize how much rest I actually needed. I think I might have been really close to clinical exhaustion. I was so fried. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm looking forward. We, we are finally going to go camping at the end of this month. So looking forward to just a, a break. I think my eyes have, have come to the point of, you know, everything's a blur where they're so tired. Mm. And I think a, a week looking at the sky will, will, will cure them. Well, it's, you know, when you're, when you're doing something you're passionate about, you pour your whole heart into it. And I know you do that with your music. You know, you are, you're in the zone. And so you're pouring all of your creative juices. You're pouring all of your time. Uh, all of your focus is right there. And then trying to switch to do something else. It's kind of hard sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to detach yourself from something that you're, you 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 fallen into and you can't get out. But you know, at, at the same time, I can say that I had time to shave where you didn't. <laughs> How do you like that, Gloria? <laughs> huh? oh, 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 This is Chris Kringle territory right here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking kind of more Charlton Heston and um, Moses. But, oh, uh, it could be. I could be Moses. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one of the things that we just uh, talk about uh, a little partial sponsorship and a little uh, little plug here for Game Toppers, but we uh, actually just launched our late pledge manager for Game Toppers. So. During our campaign, we ended up with 1,622% uh, funded. We did $811,000. I mean, so grateful to everybody. Um, and now the late pledge manager launches so everybody can make their selections on the different kind of mats. And we had these mat bundles with these crazy prices on the four rack Lord Burton, the six hole Lord Burton rack with six mats. And, you basically get the rack for free when you buy these six mats and uh, crazy good Kickstarter specials. Uh, also, all of the other things that we unlocked with the brand new leg kits and dining gaming covers that you can turn your game topper now into a full blown gaming table. Uh, it was it, it was so exciting going through all of those things and we unlocked over fifty five stretch goals. Wow, that's a it's lot like, of stretch goals. And it's Hannah is my daughter is does all of our graphics work and she does such a great job. But man, our Google Doc is like 14 pages of of corrections, add-ons that no, let's move this one, let's do this, let's do I mean, we were in high gear and some super crazy good deals. And we're gonna leave them open. You can late pledge right now, and you can do that till July 5th and take advantage of all the Kickstarter specials and all those unlocked stretch goals. After July 6th, you can still late pledge, not a problem, but some of those stretch goals are gonna go away because of our need to order and everything. And then likewise, some of the package prices will still be really much cheaper than buying things individually. Um, so it's still gonna be an amazing deal, but some of the prices are gonna go up a little bit. So uh, till July 5th, you can lock and load on some amazing deals. If you miss the Kickstarter, you can still get in on it. You can check that out at GameToppersLLC.com or you can go to the Kickstarter page and you'll see the button that says Late Pledge on the, on the website, Late Pledge Now. You'll see the whole pre-order store. You can get all the goodies that are, are Game Toppers. And uh, again, uh, for all of you that be a badger and you've endured me talking about the other passion I have in my life with game toppers. 
uh, thank you for for indulging us in that. But we just love what we're doing. We we're really trying to upgrade everybody's gaming experience, and every game that you play from now on, when you have a game topper, is upgraded. It's just like the ultimate gaming accessory, and we're so thrilled and honored to be able to be a part of doing that. So with that, that's really what I've been up to. And uh, we're going to go right into our segment, our new segment, the things that makes the king go, hmm. Not that I'm really the king, though, you know? <laughs> this is the Board Game News, where King Berkey reflects on some of the current things happening in the board game industry. Some may be good, some may be bad, but they're all things that made our king go, hmm. We have Darth Grader is in, and Darth, hi, Luke, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> but he wants me to do... He wants me to do Moses. Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Can you make the beard part? No. Do that. <laughs> I see Rick is here too. Rick Ortloff. It was a funny little story. I was out mowing the lawn uh, Saturday, and Rick comes driving in with his son. He lives uh, about an hour and a half away from us. He was in town for graduations or something, and he's just stopped by out of the blue. And we sat down and had such a great time just talking for a little bit. And I ran him over to our warehouse and his son and showed him about game toppers. And, I thought you were going to say uh, you run him over with your lawnmower. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I just drug him behind, you know. And uh, <laughs> But, yeah, it was uh, super fun seeing him. So thanks for joining us, Rick, and that was a really great time. Mm. Well, the thing that's making me go, hmm, and mm -hmm. it, it seems like it's been making me go, hmm, more and more as this has happened the last few years, but the Spiel de Genres nominations have been announced. All right. The Spiel. And so I didn't write down the Kinder Spiel, so if you have those, you can help me with that. But I did look at the Spiel de Genres, and, and the Spiel – Typically is that lighter family weight type of game, Ticket to Ride is well known, uh, Alhambra, that type of weight of game. And this year there was three nominations um, by some games that are very common that I don't know about because they tend to come out in Europe before we hear about them here in the United States. But Zombie Teens from Asmo Day. Now, as I understand it, this is part of a series of games. I don't know really anything mm -hmm. about it. Uh, it has a BGG rating of 1.3 weight. So it's a light weight game. There are various posting the picture. Zombie Teens. Um, interesting artwork. I can't talk much about this. Uh, Barry, do you have any information about this game? Uh, no, no, nothing whatsoever apart from I played Zombie Bus. <laughs> which is it's not the same Zombie bus. what are they eating the engine brains out of the engine or what uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that was, was a delayed oh i got it i got it he said a funny the king has said a funny oh dear <laughs> yeah i know nothing about it i know nothing i do there's a zombie game with kids before and i think yeah. Yeah, but. Hey, I see Trent is here. Good to see you. And Darth Grader has finished his school year. Just found out that he landed a spot in summer school, which allows me to write my own two-week curriculum. Woohoo! Guess who's running a two-week game club? Ah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the second game is from Pegasus Spiel, and it's Macro Micro Crime City. Macro Micro Crime City. It's kind of a Where's Waldo meets Sherlock Holmes is the way I've heard it described. It has a 1.0 weight uh, rating by BGG. Uh, do you know anything about this bad boy? I uh, just no. It's like, well, I don't even know why we're talking about it, right? Because it's like, I don't know what to say. 
but it it feels like this is this is part of my point about things that make me go hmm you really have to dig into a lot of research and i i honestly didn't take the time to go in there and find out about how the games work i haven't had time for that but uh the next game which i had heard a little bit more about because i had actually been contacted by cosmos uh, this game from Cosmos is called The Adventures of Robin Hood. And this is from Michael Menzel, who is yeah. uh, one of my favorite artists. I love Michael Menzel's art. Uh, he's pretty amazing. He says that he's not going to hardly ever do any board games, as I understand it. But he did Legends of Andor, which mm -hmm. was a very well-received game and, and generally recognized as a good quality game. And here we've got... Adventures of Robin Hood, and this one I don't know much about either, but I'm sure we're robbing from the stealing from the poor and keeping it all, or something like that. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> but look at the art, and look at the—I mean, the pedigree, and that, and then it's Cosmos. I usually like Cosmos games. Yeah, it looks like a small Cosmos game as well. So. I wish we could explain, I could explain better about what these games are. I apologize for that, but th those are the listing. And then if we move on to the Kennerspiel, which is typically recognized as a little bit more of the strategy heavier games, we go into the first one. It's called Paleo from Z-Man Games. I generally really like a lot of Z-Man games. This is basically a adventure caveman themed cooperative type of game. And this is rated with a weight from BGG Con at, at BGG, I mean at 6.45 paleo. I don't know much about it. Uh, I hadn't heard much about this. Have you heard about this? Uh, I've seen pictures of it, but that's about it. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, the next one is called uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak. Now this mm -hmm. one has gotten an incredible amount of buzz. Uh, it won the Golden Geek Award. It's nominated for many Dice Tower Awards, I believe, uh, uh, Origins Awards. Uh, uh, it has a deck building, worker placement type of mechanisms, and it's by CGE, and readily buzzed about in all of the board game groups I'm involved in, and hear a ton of stuff about this particular game. Um, we're going to talk about some of the games we want to play in a future segment here. And this one is rated at 2.81 weight by BGG. Mm. 2.81. So here we go from Paleo being a 6.45 all the way down to a 2.81. Weird. Then there's another game called Fantasy Realms from WizKids. Now, th this here is, is basically kind of in, in keeping with, from what I've been told, something similar to Mansions of uh, Mansion on the Hill and Red Rising. It's uh, basically a very simple set collection card game, and it's, the weight from BGG is 1.76. Wow. It's either that the, the rating is, is not being rated correctly or... Um... Yeah, that doesn't sound like a, a strategic game. It, but again, is, is, I'm going to have to check that out on the board game rating. So. Well, I was listening to a couple different podcasts while I was mowing the lawn, and I was listening to the Dukes of Dice, Alex Goldsmith and Sean Ramirez. Uh, super fun podcast if you've never heard the Dukes of Dice. I love these guys so much. Uh, just great people. Uh, down in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And they... Uh, they were talking about this same concept. And when they heard Fantasy Realms being nominated in this category, it really threw them for a loop. Sean's an attorney and he just shaking his head, you know, arms in the air going, what? Um, if it was in the Spiel category, you know, the, the actual Spiel de Jaris Award in that lighter family weight type of game category, it would make more sense. But these are supposed to be games that are supposed to have a little more meat on the bones, and they don't, um, with the exception of maybe Paleo. Um, Lost Rooms wow. of Arnak, I, people hear, I hear are 
love it, but it's not overly complex. So I don't have quite as much problem with that because there's a lot going on in the game. Um, I don't know. What, what's your take on that, Barry? Um, Makes me go home. It, it is interesting, but again, we we can only kind of like guess. Did you freeze on they're, me? They're judging these. these. So I think Barry has frozen on me. No, you have frozen on me. This is often you. caused by an unstable internet connection. If you're on Wi-Fi, try plugging in your router or moving it closer. Who's frozen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he goes. Yeah, he's gone. So I'm going to carry on. I would say that if I have lost connection, do, 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 I haven't. I've still got Wi-Fi. Simple set Wi-Fi. So anyway, it's back. It's gone. Um, it is interesting because I mean, the what someone else might find complex might someone else finds easy. I mean, again, there might be it might be on the depth of strategy that's in the game and the the amount of routes and the ways that it can be played that make the game kind of you know more complex instead of you know just having complex rules. So it might be the rules. And it, it, it might bad. be, it might be the um, the other thing. So yeah, it might be the rules that make it complex, or it might be the actual strategy to win the game or to proceed pretty well, which make a game complex. Yeah, you am I back now? Okay, you're back. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was you that locked up. I was reading stuff, and it was really cool, and it's on the recording, so you're going to have to bump it in there too because i read it really well about reconnecting your internet it was a very oh, nice statement that i made i did i did hear so half of it i did well that you need to hear the whole thing it's not <laughs> it's only half as good <laughs> if it's half as good as you say it is then it's half the experience of half this podcast it's less, less than half that i like more than half of you yeah and yeah. the other half. Or more than half that you deserve. Yeah. I feel thin, Gandalf. Mm. Like too much bread over butter. Yeah, too much butter mm. being spread over. over bread. <laughs> 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 Things that make Barry go, hmm. Yeah, if in doubt, follow your nose. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um, yeah, it's, it's this whole... Every year, I, it seems like I don't know these games, and then when we find out about them, we find out that these games that should be a little more strategic, complex, and they're just really lightweight games. And I'm wondering what's going on with that. Is that just a trend that that the spiel is going, and that we no longer look at heavier Euro games in these categories? Again, I don't think you could judge the the BGG rating on what it is due to the fact that it's people voting. Um, and everyone's got a different expectation of about a game, you know, as I, as I was kind of saying, it might be the rules that might make the game complex, or it might be just that the, the game itself is convoluted as a, an overall strategy. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And again, you know, you can't just trust EGG ratings. I mean, as much as you well, this want is their to do, weight. This is their weight rating though. This isn't the voting of, of, of the popularity of the game. Yeah, but it is voted still by the public. They they tell you, I mean, I've done it before. I've said that this game is kind of a medium heavyweight game. And so this okay. over here, you see it says vote count. So 201 people said that um, it's a medium weight game, The Lost Art Ruins of Arnak. Um, which is 61%, which puts it in that kind of middle category. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so how many points does it give it for those different ratings? I haven't actually done that before. I don't know. Um, it just goes on the percentage know. of votes. Just says the vote. So it, if you say it's easy, is it going to give it a 1.0? And if you say it's medium, is it going to give it a 3 to 5? Or Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, a mean average. So very mean. Yeah, very very mean, aggressive <laughs> average. 
<laughs> like some people give like a, a game a one out of ten when they haven't even played it or the game is not even out yet. So it's like, yeah, right. Well, I do understand that. That can that can definitely and it be small sample size might not be indicative of what's really going on there. But but when you look at when you look at fantasy realms, that's a really simple game. Yeah. That, that that's not a Kenner Shield type of game and from what I've seen in the past. You know, that's a that's a spiel the jars game or maybe it's a kinder spiel game. No, it's not a kinder spiel. But uh, yeah, I am I know nothing about these games. Apart oh, apart from Dragon Nomino. Dragon Dragon Nomino. I heard about that coming out, which is um oh, what's it called? King uh King Domino, not King Domino. Yeah, King Domino. But so with it's another a version. Yeah, Bruno Cathala again. I've heard of that one. And of course I've heard of Lost Ruins of Arnick, which I tried to buy, but they ran out of um copies in French. Well, that's basically our topic. Things that make the king go, hmm. Mm. And we're going to move into our segment, the good, the not so bad and ugly, where we talk about games that we have played. And we got a drop, I think, for it. We have. The good. For the life of me, I do not know why you have me in a Santa Claus costume there. Oh, I, I don't know. Because Santa is good? Oh, not so, yeah, good, not so bad. Yeah, okay, I get it now, I get it. <laughs> I still don't like it, but I get it. <laughs> There's the man with the big white bushy beard. <laughs> Well, tell us what kind of have you been playing some games, Barry? I have been playing some games. A lot of them solo. Oh, solo. I have I have one game that I've played and I have a game that might classify as almost played. Okay. So you go first. Okay. I'm gonna probably skip the guessing part of the game. But yeah, let's uh, skip the guessing part. Just tell us. Okay, yeah. I recently played Destinies, which oh, is the Lucky Duck, Lucky Duck game based with the minis from Mythic Games' Joan of Arc uh, Time of Legend. Um, it's a one to three player game. So I played one player. Um, <laughs> and it's an, 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 an adventure exploring game. But normally it's a race against time. You, you're basically going to be racing against the other players to try and achieve your objectives before they do. And so you're all plonked into a scenario and you're going to start exploring a board which is made up of cards. Um, so you basically your turn is move and then perform an action. But there could be many, many actions that you can do in that same turn. And that's all you're doing. You're moving around. You go into the monastery. You see the 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 the, the, the father figure there. You can speak to them. You can show them some of the items that you have. You can uh, ask them other questions. Um, and then when you run out of things to tick off the boxes, it's the end of your turn, and you pass the tablet to the next player. And you're going to be explaining everything out loud for the other players, if there were any other players. Um, what's happening, where it's going, what you found, what you didn't find. Um, and this is all shared information. And that's basically the game. It's just a case of exploring and finding out things. And it's all done in the tablet. But you have this visual representation of the map. And also you have your personal player board. Now, this is the interesting part because you're going to be doing some skill tests like... Um, you test your knowledge. You're going to be testing your strength and your agility. I think that's the three. Um, and I this have is strength and knowledge and no agility. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> and uh, this is the fun part of it. You're always going to have two dice, and they're na numbered from one to four. And you're going to be rolling these dice when you do a skill test, and you add up the values, and you check off on your little tablet, and it's numbered one to 12. And you'll have these little tokens at various spaces on here. And for each of these little tokens, which is below the number that you've rolled, counts as a success for that skill. That is genius. And the fact that you can level up these skills, so basically lower the number, um, but you're given a choice because some, some of the stats have like four tokens, some of the stats have three tokens, and so you've got a choice. Should you make that three a two so you only have to roll two to be successful and as soon as two is the lowest number that you can roll with two dice um that's a good idea or should i bring this 14 down to 13 and so you have this dilemma of what skills you want to uh ameliorate and which tokens of those skills you want to lower to to help you out and it's a a an interesting story with some very kind of really you, you you are always under pressure at some stage where you've got too many items because you're going to carry x amount of items five items and you you have to use your skills as best as you can and try and level them up to to achieve and get the the, the things that you need and um it was an experience that I enjoyed. Uh, not only did it blow my mind with the effects and music, which shocked me because I did them and they sounded so much better than I remember, but um, but the fact that this little system of the dice and the skills was really interesting. Um, and it kind of turned... At the beginning, I didn't know what to do, but then it turned into like a, a, a video game. You're grinding to level up. So you're going to go there, you're going to do this little test and fight this wolf, and hopefully you'll kill it because you've got this weapon which is giving you a little bit of a boost so you can re-roll a dice or something. And it was, you know, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm leveling up, I'm leveling up, I'm going to get to my quest, and boom, game over. It was, it was, it was fun. Yeah, I've heard good things about this game, and, and they have father figures, you know. Father, did you eat the government cheese, Father. Father, were you constipated too, Father? <laughs> I have no idea what film that's from. But, um, but yeah, I yeah. heard really good things about it. It sounds like it's uh, in keeping with so many of the Lucky Duck production. Their their games have just been really fantastic, right? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it was amazing because there's going to be like this uh, replay value which is going to diminish. Because you'll probably, I'll probably won't play this scenario again for another year until I forget everything where it, things are. And I might have like a vague remembrance of there's there was something to do with that over there, the well. That go in the well for something. I can't remember what. But that's the same kind of thing as the Seventh Continent, and it felt kind of like the Seventh Continent, but it had this app with a very nice story and a lot of different choices. So it was kind of like the next evolutionary step of the seventh continent. So instead of like lots of cards coming out, you had everything on the app. Um, it doesn't sound like it was too difficult then. No, no, it's very light to pick up. Um, you, you have a few choices like um, when to use items and you'll start the game with collecting items, which are just one use items, which you can either show to people and keep them or use them for their special power. Uh, and later on you get the, the bigger items, which are, you know, indestructible. You can use them over and over again. And some of them are actually your quest items, or some of them might be another player's quest item, and you've got hold of it, <laughs> but you don't know. So, um, yeah, it, it, there's some interesting choices. Um, I find myself just like running through it really quickly. It was a case of like, okay, I'm here now. I'm going to click that, and yeah, uh, yada yada yada. I'd move on. So I kind of like started absorbing everything and then afterwards i just like yeah click that go there click that go there and mm. so i mean it might die on people because it's it feels like you're just like reading a book on your own mm. but um i yeah i'm looking forward to playing this with more people yeah i think it would be more fun 
Yeah, I heard the Secret Cabal guys talking about it, and Don was talking about it, uh, and he really seemed to like it and was interested to get back to it again. Mm. Well, I've been playing a, a little simple roll and write game, and uh, I don't know who roll and write is, but I like him. And and so I've been playing that roll and write game <laughs> with uh, some of my friends. Because <laughs> there's actually a game. <laughs> uh, I'm playing with my friends online. I pr play uh, every other week. We've been getting together with a couple friends of mine, Ryan Bruns uh, and uh, Brian Pope from Arcade Wonders, Rick Scrand, and we get together over Skype and just and connect with one another and Zoom sometimes. And we've been playing, they have a new Spoils of War game coming out that's really simplified the mechanic of, of the set collection and all that that was a little bit heavier in the original Spoils of War, but now it's really this fast moving fun pub game and so super super excited about it but we've been playing this other uh game called silver and gold okay. and it's a roll and write game and basically you have this little pool of four cards and they all have all little maps on them and on these maps are little grids of squares and there's a pool of cards i think it's seven cards and six of these cards get pulled and they have a little they have a little, uh, it might be like uh, like the chess movement, like of, of the knight, for instance. It might have a little, uh, no, that's not it. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, <laughs> these, these little cards, I haven't seen it played on a board like that before. Um, they're shapes, like a little L, three up and one over. Or it might be a square of four dots. And you have to fill in these squares on your little map. You're going to get four cards that are general cards uh, that have these maps on them. They're going to have little gold uh, coins on them. It's going to have a little uh, palm tree on it. And you get to keep two of them. You get dealt four, you pick two. You keep them, and now you got to fill in all your spots. If you fill in a coin, you get to put a coin on the track up on top of this player board and everybody's going to, whoever gets the first four coins is gonna get six points. The next person that gets the next four coins is gonna get five points and so forth. And so you get points for that and you get a point for every coin that you fill up, fill up on your board. But then each one of these cards that you fill in also gives you points. And so you collect all, you have four rounds that you do this where you go through these six shapes and you're trying to fill in your thing and you're grabbing from the pool to grab new cards when you fill one out. And we play this game in under 20 minutes, uh, very simple to teach, but I don't know, played it probably six times and it's always like, yeah, let's play it again. Um, it's, it's simple and I actually don't really like roll and write style games all that much. There's a few of them that I like, like Roll Through the Ages is one I really like. But generally speaking, I don't want to be writing on something and drawing things while I'm playing a game. I want more tangible things in front of me. Um, but this one really works and it's great for this type of environment. It's just kind of a quick, you can joke around and not be too serious where you're concentrating on everything. And so it really is a pub style type of game. So I really liked it. Okay, so silver and gold. Interesting. Yep. Simple, easy to teach, great family game. You could take it, you know, non-gamers, show them how to play this, easily pick it up, and they'll have a good time. Yeah. Talking of rolling rights, I want to talk about rolling right. Oh. Um, I, I'm not into rolling rights. I find them like bingo. It's like bingo, playing bingo but with no prizes. Bingo um, apart from, yeah, apart from the prizes. gloat over your friends. Um, I'd recently received all of the expansions for Railroad Inc. from Horrible Games, okay. which is a roll and write. Um, roll and write. He does all kinds of stuff, doesn't he? Yeah. He, I think his cousin, Roland Rat, is um, a TV <laughs> disc <laughs> But, uh, yeah. In this game, you are just connecting routes trying to connect roots from the results of dice so dice will be rolled um they have either roads or train tracks and stations which change from railway tracks to to roads um and you're connecting 
as many of these as you can within X amount of rolls. Um, and there are various versions. This is the blue version, which comes with two expansions, which are extra dice that change things. So they add rivers. Um, there are oh. other expansions, like the red expansions, which adds um, asteroids. So c comets will come down and, and create holes on your board and destroy track if it's there. Um, there's another one which has cactuses. So you have to plant as many cactuses as possible or make a large group of forest trees. Um, it's I, I like it because it's it's construction. It's it's building, you know, it's like tiny towns. It's like era, but it's drawn and it actually does feel like you're building something. You're having to really, really think about how you're going to do this. And every expansion does a nice little twist. So it's not going to be the same game every time you play. And the two new uh, boxes expansions comes with some challenges. So it makes the game even more complex. They have these spaces that will give you bonuses or if you collect most of them together. And so it's a race to try and, and fill those spaces. Or they may give you an extra bonus um, uh, track that you might be able to draw. Uh, and then there's these challenges cards that, you know, like um, end of game goal cards, but it's like the first one to fulfill them gets the most points. Really, really interesting. If you're not into Royal Rights, try this one. This, I think, will convert you because it's it starts simple. It can get complex. And as I said, there are there's about 20 different expansions that you can play with this, so you can shake up your game um they also did like a bigger map which i didn't get when so yeah and some solo challenges and you can play <laughs> up to as many people as you want because for each box you get like four or six extra boards that you can draw on and i print them out as well so because i like pencil and i don't like like the black palm of my hands they're, they're great it's, it's, it's a great production but i'm just finicky about black marker pen and rubbing my hand on it and rubbing something out accidentally. <laughs> yeah. 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 We did uh, have that back to when you were talking about that, uh, the silver and gold on our Kickstarter, we have these acrylic covers that go over the, uh, our cup holders, but I don't have one here right now. I don't think, um, I think it's in my game right now, but they're a German company that has these dry erase markers that you can write your scores and stuff on here, but then you can use the back of it to erase it. All right. And I've seen a few roll and write games that have had that, but this particular one worked really good. So it didn't leave all that residue and it works great on these acrylic covers. Oh, cool. So I, I said, that's the kind of marker we're going to get for our acrylic covers because it's just really nice. Wow. And then all you need is a, a mat, which is a roll and write mat. And then you put, large acrylic cover over the top of it and you everyone draws on the map etches it yeah they actually have some of those some of those uh laminates that they lay out that you can do that kind of thing with but okay yeah i've heard good things about this game actually and so i'm kind of interested in it actually i you know for i i know i know both of you and i this last year have really struggled with mm. being able to get games to the table because we haven't had our game groups together uh, we've both been very active with our work lives. Um, you know, it's been all kind of all consuming. And sometimes I don't have much left brain power to my life is a 14 hour a day heavy euro, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it. But, you know, I look at my games and I, I long for them. Mm. <laughs> I want to play games and uh, I just haven't had that much opportunity. But when I went camping, I had an idea. I backed a Kickstarter from a really highly acclaimed solo game. Uh, Jamie Keggy from The Secret Cabal said this is the best game solo ever. He's head over the moon, you know, uh, head over heels uh, over this game. The, the people I've heard that say it's fantastic, uh, people that I know and trust love it, Paul Grogan loves it, a lot of other people. 
And so I thought, you know, I'm going camping. I'm going to, I've got this afternoon where I don't have to worry about anything or think about anything. I'm just going to enjoy a solo game. Well, you know, the problem is, is I don't enjoy being by myself. Mm. You know, I'd rather be around people. And, and, and so I'm bored with myself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I pull out this game and I start reading the rules. I read the rules for an hour and a half. I'm not a stupid individual. You might disagree with that. You might be able to argue that. But I don't see myself as a stupid individual. But after I read for an hour and a half, I felt pretty stupid. Oh, dear. Because I was not getting it. And I'm like, I really want to do this. I want to achieve this. I hear how great it is but I'm just scratching my head. And I go to a video and Z Garcia is doing a video on this game. And, but it's only a 22 minute video. So it's kind of a quick overview. And he says, there's so much going on in this game. I, there's no way I can cover it in this video. I'm gonna give you my first impressions. Here's a quick little overview of how we play the game. And he went through it. Now I had read the rules, um, have read the appendices, had you know, weird appendices. Uh, went through all of that, and then he said, he, he goes, uh, I can't cover any of this at all, but when he starts showing the movement, I just go, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I kind of get that, but I still really don't know how to play this game. I don't know enough of the details because there's a pot load of details and dice mitigation and all kinds of different things going on. Uh, so then I think, okay, I need to watch a playthrough video. This will, I'll get it. I, I'm not dumb. I'm not dumb. I'm a smart person. I'm good enough. I'm strong enough. And doggone it, people like me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so I go and I see this video. It's from Paul Grogan. It's four hours and 50 minutes. <sighs> and I look at myself and I say to myself, self, there's no way in he double toothpicks that I'm going to be able to get through this thing. So I, I said, well, maybe that's just Paul. I'm going to go so, somewhere else. <laughs> I found two more noted board game people. They're like three, three and a half hour playthrough videos. And I had it all punched out. I, I bought it on Kickstarter. It was an expensive game. It took me an hour to set it all up and punch it all out and put all the little bits everywhere. And I looked at it and I just said, I'm, this is not me right now. And I put it all away. And, and you know what the game is? No. I, I purposely didn't say it. Does anybody out there in La La Land, uh, Babylon, know uh, what I'm talking about? I don't see anybody in the chat. <laughs> you, have you moved? Have you <laughs> moved your boat to La La Land? You moved out of Babylon? Well, they made a movie out of it. So I don't know if I need to refresh my chat because when I went offline there, I wonder if that cut it off. No, it hasn't moved. All right. Well, anyway, so the game is called Nemo's War. Okay. Second edition. And, you know, this was, I think I spent like 120 bucks on this game. I bought all the exchange. Um, the production looks great. Um, it's got a really cool feel and theme. You know, you got the Nautilus, you're trying to find these other ships and there's battleships and there's other kind of ships and, uh, how you move around the board. And I mean, but it's just like a pot load of stuff. There's dice to roll. There's, you lose, you know, you can mitigate the dice roll by spending these action points, but then you get on your despair track or whatever it's called. And I was just, I was just so overwhelmed with the complication of the rules. And it's weird because I play some heavy games, you know, I play like Kanban and I thought it was easy. It didn't bother me at all. Um, Mombasa and Great Western Trail, uh, uh, Star Trek Ascendancy, TI4, there's a ton of rules in those games and none of those bother me whatsoever. Uh, to play that type of heavy Euro style game. 
but there was just something about this that I couldn't wrap my head around. Maybe I was just really wore out. I don't know, but mm, I yeah, so I still want to play it. But ufta. Sometimes when your head's not in it, it, it makes learning a game really, really hard. Um, and sometimes it's easier for someone to to explain it. You know, turn one paraphrase into one sentence. Um, but there was no way I was going to sit down a four and a half hour video of somebody no. playing the game. No, that that's for when you have insomnia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what I used to do anyway. I used to watch play through videos just to help me fall asleep and it works, but um, I, I'm not naming names. <laughs> well, so that was a long explanation of a game that I almost played that now I, the jury's still out, whether it's good, not so bad or ugly. And I, I gotta believe it's good from what everybody else says, but for me it was it was it it didn't work and I don't even have another comment, so <laughs> well with that we both did two, right? Yeah, we did two. All right, let's uh time to go to our sponsor, Arcane Wonders. And they've got some cool stuff going on, I gotta tell you. Arcane Wonders opened up their late pledge manager for Foundations of Rome for a week. I think uh, if you're watching this live, I think you can still get in on it. I'm not sure if you hear the recorded version, iTunes version of this podcast, but you're able to get in on this great game by Emerson Matsuchi, City Building. Uh, we made the Foundations of Rome map, and you can get on our Kickstarter, but you can get a three by five map from directly from Arcane Wonders, uh, such an amazing game. But they have some other really uh, fantastic games that are available now, Smartphone Inc. and its expansion, Smartphone Inc. Uh, uh, update 1.1. Also, the new Aquatica. And then, if we look right back in here, do you see this? Ooh, what's this? This is a game topper game haul bag that we have on the kickstarter and it's way cool but look what's more cool is inside of it Ooh, the new game four gardens got a cup holder it's in there that's cool but now four gardens is available Long ago, in the beautiful kingdom, a queen and her people pleased their gods by building a mythical pagoda. Four beautiful gardens surround their construction, each dedicated to the god of the four seasons. As time passed, the queen fell ill, and her people were summoned to complete for the crown. The four gods will decide their new heir with the challenge to build the most pristine garden all around the pagoda. Arcane Wonders, baby. Uh, lots of buzz going on about this game. Of course, you mm -hmm. can still get a big special that they are running at the ArcaneWonders.com website where they have a bunch of games uh, that they are running at a significant, I think it's 40% discount if I'm remembering right, but Volcanic Island uh, Dr Dragon Scales, which is the amazing Richard Lanius uh, Defenders of the Realm game. Uh, there's a uh, Royals, uh, Spoils of War, uh, and uh, uh, what's that little game? I'm forgetting the name of it. Yeah, Good have, Critters. Good, good Critters. Whoops. Senchi. Yeah, Senchi, Good Critters, uh, and uh, Onitama. Onitama. That's awesome. Yeah, Just great is. games. Sheriff of Nottingham was their first one that they don't have on the site now, but uh, yeah, crazy good games from now? Arcade Wonders. And I think you can still late pledge for Freedom 5. Yeah, possibly. I, I see that you still pledge for Foundations of Rome. Okay, there you go. I can't wait to get mine. So amazing. Yes. But uh, now you've mentioned Sheriff of Nottingham, I, I missed it off my list. That's That could have gone on my list quite easily. Ah. <laughs> well, that's our amazing sponsorship, Arcane Wonders. Check them out at arcanewonders.com. And now we're going to move into the, 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 the babble topic. 
And now it's time for the Babble 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 Berkey and Badgers Board Game Babble. Hey hey hey! Babble Babble. What are we babbling about today, brother? Well, the world seems to be going back to normal, which is good um i'm I, I like board games because there's rules and i like following rules and that's what i've been doing i've been in here most of most of the pandemic <laughs> but um i am very much looking forward to now i've had one of those needles stuck in my arm um to going out and hanging out with people um recently i've been contacted by bombaics who say uh they asked me if I was interested in working at Essen this year. I said, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so far, so good. It looks like I'm on route for Essen in October. Um, so tell, where- t- t- tell me a little bit more about this, because um, I have a question regarding Essen. I got an email from Max uh, Verlag of, of Essen, you know, of the Spiel Fair. For getting no, booth space, what? I don't know. You don't know. Yeah. Very impressive person. Very impressive person. <laughs> okay. And uh, he does emails like a uh, lots of them to lots of people. Okay. Very impressive. So. <laughs> he uh, he might be Roland White's cousin. I think he is a third cousin yeah. once removed. Yeah, because he might, he's good at writing. He is good at writing because and, of the emails. You're right. And, yeah. and Roland's a German name, isn't it? Roland is mostly German. It's it's yeah. a it's partially Czechoslovakian though, but that goes okay. way back, and that's another story. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we can sign up for the booth. Well, honestly. Get, because of our Kickstarter, because of last year's delays with COVID and all the different things. I really was not in the mindset of going to conventions this year. I really was not thinking they were going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then within about this last month, all of a sudden we're starting to see a lot of people's opinion change on that. There's less, it seems like more people are excited to get out. A lot of that has to do with vaccinations and different things of that nature too. But Essen uh, in this report, was the spiel was saying that by July, Germany was expected to be 70% vaccinated. And I heard that their rollout was actually not going very well. But yeah. So that surprised me to hear 70%. And then they said they're going to have full attendance. Wow. Like Gen Con comes out and they say 40% attendance social distancing, mask wearing indoors, all of that. So a lot of, you know, instead of 75,000 people, it's going to be 30,000 people. Yeah. Okay. So that's a dynamic. A lot of the great big companies like Asmodee, uh, Piazzo are not going to Gen Con. Mm-hmm. And then we get this news that the spiel is going on and it's like, okay, but I'm listening to the Board Game Insider podcast with Stephen Bonacor and Ignacy Chevichek. And they said they just heard, and after I heard it, I went and looked it up. Um, the Oktoberfest in Munich has been canceled in Germany. Mm, yeah, I heard about that. Well, that's like a national religion over there, right? <laughs> yeah. That's like canceling Easter. Or oh, St. Patrick's. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Um, But so how in the world can they cancel Oktoberfest and still hold a major convention with 140,000 turnstile attendees? Hmm. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect it to be full. I expected it to probably be half full um, to give social distancing a chance because that place is ramming. Um, Exactly. I know nothing. I just, I received an email. Do you want to work at Essen? I said, yes. Okay. Make sure you're vaccinated. Yes. That's it. Um, and that's kind of what inspired this, this babble to- topic is the fact that we will be get able to go out and 
visit our friends no matter how far away and start playing games with other people and that's what this is about what games are we dying to play with other people yeah i think it's a, it's an interesting i know it's a little off i started asking that question but i'm curious to find out what the convention community is going to look like because we play games there too yeah. and we're starting to get together with game groups uh those kind of things but and again, when I was uh, Scott was talking this morning, he was saying that BGG Con is going on in November, but he doesn't know numbers because it depends on the hotel. Oh well, Dallas though—that's the old west. They don't have too many restrictions. No, no, they're pretty liberal there. So, well, tell us. Uh, I, I think one of the things that we're going to talk about is. Uh, five of the top games are really itching to play right yes we are and these are games that were are are games that we're going to play with other people right yes these are games that we hopefully will be playing with people that we know <laughs> and we want you know we, we've kind of like lined it up you know what i mean the some of these games i think might be very new games which you've probably just received some of these games might be older games which you love playing and maybe you have like this this certain i don't know with you you might have like a certain group that you always play a certain game with i mean i know that when my friend guillaume when we ever we see them we don't have much time to play games we chat and then code names comes out because it's a nice hour to kill before they have to hit the road again so <laughs> but there yeah what games are we excited to play? What games do you... Is, is there? Is there? I, I know what I want to play. That's for sure. <laughs> well, why don't we do our countdown where you do five and I'll do five. Uh, and you want to do your number five right now? Yeah. I'll I've got mine right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Huh? Sorry. I blanked. I have mine ranked. Oh, um, yeah. I have... But... I have mine ranked as well. Don't oh, you did your homework. Me. Good job. Yes. Way to go there, Dr. <laughs> Yavetcha. You did a good job there, yeah. Yeah. It, it, maybe you guys as well might want to write down your, your top five in the comments as well. Yeah, maybe Those we could do a poll. Maybe we could do a poll. Oh, maybe we could do a poll. That would be Not hard. A because I'd, poll. Not I'd have a to list poll. every single game on BGG to get <laughs> a poll. Well, can't yeah, you just make it. can't you just make lines where they have to fill it in? Mm, Facebook can do that, but not BGG. Mm. But anyway, I'll have to. You figure I'll, that I'll, out. You figure I'll, out the poll. I'll figure out the poll and I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll dance around it. Um, yeah, so my number five is a game that I've talked about in the show. Cool destinies. Yeah, Ooh. I want to play this with other people um, because I think that's how you're going to experience how the game was meant to be played. Having people um, converse and and have this challenge of getting to your goal before they do, while exploring and and laughing at their failures and they laugh at yours, <laughs> and then seeing what what skills that and, and you know they're going to upgrade as they play so um yeah i'm looking forward to that and maybe some feedback from the music and say oh that was really scary and in fact forrest forrest said that his son when he played it he said that the music scared him it sent shivers down his spine so, <laughs> wow yeah that's a nice thing that's my number five Destinies. Well, that, that sounds like a good one, actually. I don't own it, but that sounds like a good one. Um, I've really been jonesing to play this game. I got it from Arcane Wonders, our sponsor. Yeah. It's called Aquatica. And it's simple diving, deep strategies. Uh, it's got a bunch of Manta miniatures, and, you know, there's card play, 50 of these character cards that are there. There's a tableau. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't know a whole lot about it. But I know that you're, you know, you're hiding a lot of secrets. You've got all these creatures and all this kind of stuff that's going on. 
and people have really talked well about it. Um, I'm just really kind of, it, it, it's not supposed to be, it plays in an hour, so it's not supposed to be overly complicated, but people have really been embracing it. And I got the expansion for it too, the cold water expansion. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited to try this one. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay. So that's, that's Aquatica from Arcane okay. Wonders. My number four. Number four. My number four is Space Gate Odyssey, which is a game that I've had for a couple of years. And I've played a couple of times, but it's a game that I am infatuated with because of its, its construction again. You're building a space station on in space and you're having uh settlers coming in and then you have to get them to the teleporters to teleport them to planets and these different planets will change during the course of the game and each planet scores differently so you may have to put like five settlers on that planet before you can put them in a, a, a bonus high scoring uh space and then once that planet's filled up, it changes to another planet. But it's all done worker placement where you're moving controllers around a control room. And whenever you move a controller into a, a particular control room, which means that uh, your settlers can move on your space station from any room to a pink room or to a green room, then you can do that action as many times as you have controllers in the control room. So if you have four controllers, you can do it four times. So it can be four settlers if you have four settlers. And you're building the same way as well. And it's it's a fantastic game which is slipped under the radar. Um, I just I just love it. It's, you're building space station. You're trying to make it economical, ergonomical, get your settlers around and get them to the planet as quickly as possible to, to score points. And yeah, but um, yeah, that. I am looking forward to playing again with whoever wants to play with it. I haven't so got anyone. Who, who makes that? That is uh, Ludonaut. Ludonaut, same people that did uh, Colt Express. Okay. Yep, that's correct. Yeah. My yeah, I haven't heard of that one. That's interesting. Well, this is a game that was a big Kickstarter. It's from one of my favorite publishers. And I really... Uh, I, I don't have a lot of this theme game. Uh, it's just a theme that I haven't, I, I don't have a negative opinion about or anything like that. I just don't have an opinion because I've not played very many of them. Um, but this is a game from Cool Mini or Not, Simon, and it's Cthulhu, Death May Die. Die. Mm. Uh, of course, the production value of Simon games is just off the hook, which I love. I, uh, I love Blood Rage is my favorite game, of course. I'm super excited to get Ankh when that comes in. I've kickstarted that. But this one here, I just haven't had time to get to the table. Um, and now we have our new Cthulhu game map from Game Toppers that I worked with Richard Lanius to design the theme with the old ship and, and Cthulhu coming out of his, his underwater city, you know, basically, and coming through in this crazy ocean. And the color scheme even would look fantastic with this. And if I would have been on top of it, I would have got this game played and put it on that sample map we got during the Kickstarter because it's perfect. It, it, and the people that I've heard uh, that play this game absolutely love this game. So I know the secret of all people or uh, Jamie Kagi is like one of his favorite games of the year when this came out. And so I'm really excited to try this. Hopefully, as we get our game group together, Josiah, my son, is getting married June 19th, coming up pretty soon. Um, but tomorrow, we're actually going to be playing a couple games in the late afternoon after our live question and answer for Game Toppers. It's going to be shown on this Steam Yard channel on, on, on our Game Topper uh, Facebook page and our Board Game Theater Game Topper YouTube channel. So you can always join us for that if you're interested too. But we're gonna uh, actually take some time to play a game tomorrow. Wow. So this might be one that we could get to the table. We'll see. Josiah's got Cthulhu, to death may die. <laughs> see, <laughs> on. A quick... see, that's the thing. Josiah's—he's the rules guy. You know, I'm. 
I got things to do, people to see. He needs to teach you Nemo's War. A quick break. We have <laughs> Willie Loomis, who has just texted his five games, which would include Ooh. stuffed fables, destinies, Arcadia Quest, Zombie Black Plague, and D and D. Oh yeah, I believe it. <laughs> yes, oh, I think list. a lot. Of, I think a lot of people are looking forward to playing D and D with other people. It, it, you know, throw their dice actually at them and make them bleed instead of over Skypey things. And Trent Turner yeah. says, Dwellings of Everdale is at the top of my list. I love oh, it. Such a good I game. To play it with more people. Yeah, that's a great game. A big fun. Yeah. Okay, number three. My number three is Greenville 1989. Which is a game that you can only play with other players. It's a Dixit game where um, it's set in kind of like a Stranger Things universe where you're teenagers and then the world goes very bizarre and you're zapped off into different parts of your village. But you have these surreal kind of Dixit style artwork, which is uh, got lots of horror references to Cujo and it and the thing and and uh, the exorcist so and your storytelling to try and get your way back you need to tell a story with a card that you have and then there'll be one player that will be the de this, the the determiner of where your story is going to, to go and they will draw some cards and they will choose a card for each other player and then each player has to guess which card this story determiner has chosen for them. And if they get it right, they keep it, and that the next step of their story. And so your stories evolve. So you you have to be very kind of um, descriptive, dis explain your feelings as your character, uh, which really helps, um, and ex explain your survive your survival instincts and your surroundings, and that will hopefully trigger the next image and hopefully make it easy for the story decider to choose a card for you. Um, it's a fantastic storytelling adventure. Um, and there's a new version, Paris 1898, 89, 18, 1889. Yeah. Which is out with some new mechanics as well, which is the same kind of thing, but, um, I haven't played that yet. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, can't wait. That's my number three. Greenville, 1989. 1989. I say Trent and, and uh, Mr. Lemons, they've got a couple comments. Yep. Between me and my brother, we have Dwellings of Everdale, Cthulhu May Die, uh, Vampire Rivals, Time Stories, Too Many Bones, and a bunch more. I bet there's a bunch. There's always a bunch more. I want to play Ticket to Ride again. And I want to play... Uh, Alhambra and War of the Worlds and Steampark. It's definitely Splendor because I've forgotten how to play that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Levin says, uh, not all new games for me, but I want to play King's Dilemma, uh, Illuminati confirmed. Yep. Dark Tower, They Live, and one I haven't discovered yet. Yeah, yeah. new game. I I've like been that game. a lot of fun things about King's Dilemma. Yeah. Again, storytelling. Hmm. So what's your number three? Number three. Um, I I don't buy very many games anymore because we haven't been able to play games. My shelf of shame is already too big. And and I'm get I'm getting it gets bigger because of all the Kickstarters I back. And then two years later they show up. You know how it is? Um, yeah. But this one was available at Miniature Market, and I'd heard such good things about it from Renegade Game Studios, Hadrian's Wall. Okay. In shrink wrap, like all the other games you just showed us. Exactly. <laughs> Duh. Um, this, this is in that, that format box, that smaller box. This thing, you could choke a mule with this thing. I mean, <laughs> this, this here is, you, you can build triceps with this game. I mean, this thing's got to weigh 30 pounds. It's just one big block of cardboard or something. Um, but anyway, I've heard uh, Blue Peg, Pink Peg, one of my favorite podcasts, talk about how much they enjoyed this game. 
uh, uh, we game together, the Kirby's Ellen and Randy played this game and it just looks so cool. Um, I love the theme of it. Uh, I, I, it's in that whole medieval Adrian's wall, the artwork, it looks really fantastic. And I'm excited to play this Hadrian's wall from Renegade Game Studios. Yay! My number two game that uh, I want to play is been spurned because not too long ago, the family and I played Ticket to Ride and it made me want to play this. And I still want to play this. I look at this game on my shelf all the time because it takes up quite a big chunk of space on the shelf. And that yeah, is... Yeah, the 10, 10 year anniversary one or the... No, 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 no. This is, mu this is Museum from Holy Grail. Oh, Museum. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. This game, I enjoyed it when I played it as a prototype. I love it as the real game. Um, and I just, I kind of miss playing it. Just, I don't know if it's the artwork that I want to see more of the cards, but I, I want to try the expansions. I haven't played the expansions yet. I played the base game a few times already. But I just want to play it again and, and again and again. I just love the mechanics, the card mechanics of spending cards to, to get cards and and then arranging it all into an, a nice museum. So it like flows to get your maximum points, um, but have other people screw you over. No, that's that's a, a Vincent Detroit artwork, right? It is. A majority of it, not all of it. Yeah, I love his artwork. He did our great wall game topper matt and he was such a pleasure to work with uh his his stuff is just beautiful mm. so that's a that's a jamie johnson uh uh this uh game uh what's yeah. the c company's name again um holy grail holy grail games yeah yeah fantastic. i could have said anything there and you'd have repeated it if i said holy crap you'd say oh yeah that's a holy, holy crap, crap game. games i like that <laughs> the frank Rowe version <laughs> <laughs> Frank Perone yeah. version, yeah. I, I actually have that game and it's sitting on my shelf of shame. Oh. Yeah, I know. I know. Um well, my number two, this game has had a lot of buzz and it's been compared to another game that's had a lot of buzz, but I'm told that these are two separate games, even though they share some of the deck deck building mechanism and worker placement. They're two different universes, and they play quite a bit differently, even though they get compared to one another. And this game is Dune in Shrink Imperium. Wrap. Dune Imperium in Shrink Wrap. In Shrink Wrap. Well, of course. <laughs> all games, I got other games I want to play, too, that I already know, but these are games I've been itching to play that I hear so much about. And this game, from what I hear, is really fabulous. There's When I tell you my number one most anticipated, uh, we'll, we'll see. But people compare the two, and they argue which one's the best. All right. <laughs> okay, so you know nothing about the game. You just want to play it. Uh, deck building, worker placement, cards, Dune, you know, Artrades. Okay, Harkonnen. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I know. Big sand oh. monsters and uh, Captain Picard in a board suit. Yeah, yeah. On top of a Fremen. worm in the desert. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I'll wait for the film, I think. Uh, that, that was a good drop. You'll be able to use that drop. <laughs> okay. So my number one most anticipated game that I want to play again it could have been another game, but they hadn't had it in stock when I when I went to buy it a couple of weeks ago, which was Era, the Medieval oh, Age. I so want to play that game. But the game that's on my list, which I can play tomorrow if someone comes, is Tiny Towns. Oh. Such uh I don't know. I just... I just love the challenge. I just love the special challenge. I just love it. I think that's that's the thing which which goes back to the um railroad ink game is it's a spatial challenge and I like spatial challenges. I like building stuff, I like planning stuff out. I don't like Tetris though. But um 
I just love that game with the different kind of buildings that you can build, the different ways, the different ways of scoring. I just want to play it again. As soon as I finish playing, I want to play it again. But unfortunately, in the past, other people want to play another game. Let's, let's move on to the next one. But it's just like, it's just an addictable thing. Just putting resources into a space. And then when they're in the right formation, that transforms into a building. Hey, didn't um, we get to play that with uh, Paul Grogan when we were in, couple of years ago at the UK Games Fair. We did indeed, yes. Yep. And I, I had a hard it. time. The, the game was really fun, but boy, I just wasn't very good at it. No, no. And playing with Josiah made me realize how, that I wasn't good at it either. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's, I just need to get a, a, a less smart uh, gaming group so that I can be the king. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you, your daughters have got children now, so you can play against them. You really whoop up on them, right? Just whoop <laughs> yeah. up on those grandkids. Yeah, they're all Make good. Them they're cry. Going, Whatever you do, let Grandpa win. <laughs> let the Wookiee win. <laughs> let the Wookiee win. <laughs> I did. Uh, I did actually play Click Clack Lumberjack with uh, Philip, and we played that a little bit, and they have a good good time with that. But I'm I'm a gentler, kinder game player in my older age. Uh, uh, hey, Kabuki Kid is in the castle. Late to yeah, the party, she, but she's here. Yeah, she's late, but hey ho. Good to see you. Uh, so yeah, that was my number one. Number one. <laughs> Wow, number one what? Number one what? Number one most anticipated game of Barry Dublin. Birthday and Badger shows star host. It says Antici he wants to play Tiny Towns. Anticipated game to play with people again. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I mean, this list could quite easily be Berkey's number one anticipated games that he wants to on shrink wrap. Well, duh. <laughs> duh. <laughs> Number I one. I only have 800 of them on the shelf. I know. Don't you, you're going to need another shelf. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> All right. My number one. That's my best year summer voice now, right? Okay. Number one. Lost Ruins of Arnak. Yeah. And it's, it's only partially in shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. The unboxing right now. Woohoo! Now it's no longer in shrink. Yeah. Uh, CGE, you know, one to four players, says 30 minutes. They lie. But <laughs> really, really cool card play. Really good adventure exploration uh, type of mechanics in this game. A little bit of deck building. Less deck building, my understanding, than, than some. Yeah. Uh, this again was you couldn't even get it and then i saw this and dune imperium come on miniature market and i grabbed them knowing that the kickstarter was going to be happening knowing i couldn't play them um but it was like there was too many of my friends that were just raving about this game and it felt like this was in my wheelhouse of games it's that kind of medium weight game uh, it's got good choices decisions i love worker placement i like deck building I like exploration. Uh, I like the the theme and look and, and CGE. You know they always put out great games, right? What? Oh boy! Oh, dear. What did she say? Is that? Go ahead. Sounds like it's being picked up from the camera mic, or something seems sort of far away. Hearing a lot of room. Yeah, that's that's Berkey's room. But yeah, uh, no. Trent, Trent's, written, Trent's written, do a boring unboxing, or does Tom have that trademark? <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah, I do have a, a, a – I'm working on breaking his trademark <laughs> for a future episode, and I got my attorneys working on it, so that will be okay. Breaking bad. <laughs> You know, I think one my 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 studio room here is does have a lot of echo, and I tend to project when I get excited. 
Mm. So I think I think my voice bounces off the walls a lot. I should put up some of those pillows, those foam pillows up there. Yeah, like carpet down and. But this is supposed to be a wood shop, and it's turned into a studio. You know. <laughs> See, it's strange how life just changes. Yeah, this used to be a garage, and now it's a a recording studio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's my my top five. Um, I'm really excited. I'm hoping tomorrow, actually, that we're going to play Lost Ruins of Arnak and Good Imperium. Uh, yeah. We've got a live question and answer for our Game Toppers uh, uh, celebration that we're going to be doing tomorrow at 12 o'clock Central Daylight Time. We're going to hopefully be done with that about 1.30. And at 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock, we're going to play two games and then maybe eat some pizza. Mm. I've, I've I've done a, a keto diet for quite a way, quite a while. I've lost about 26 pounds, but the last couple of weeks or so, I've been uh, doing a modified low carb diet where I eat some carbs, and pizza is one of those carbs that I'm going to enjoy. Mm, nice, nice. Well, there it is. What games do you guys want to play? Well, uh, you'll check out our board game geek guild. Two, two, four, eight, and we're going to be able to see some uh, polls that the poll master himself will put up, so you can tell us what you'd like to play. Yeah, yes, and again, Don't these are games up. which you are looking forward to playing with other people after not being able to play with other people. Top of your list stuff. Yeah, it's going to be good times. That'll be really exciting to get together with game groups again. Mm -hmm. Yes, and maybe BGG. Be there, Kabuki. Be at BGG. Lance yeah. wants you. Lance wants you there. That'd be cool. A, I think he's going to do a root beer challenge. That's what it is. Yes, not a Pepsi challenge. A root beer pack challenge. We're we're going to get a keg of 1998 root beer for Josiah's wedding. It's All the right. best root beer ever. Yeah. We're babbling again. <laughs> I forgot what it's like to babble. I really have. So there you go. That's our show. Uh, thanks for watching. You can find us at uh, boardgamestheater.com or boardgameseverybodyshoot.com. As Berkey said, Board Game Geek Guild is 2248. Again, we've got the Berkey and Badger podcast, which you should be able to find everywhere on all the streaming services, Spotify and iTunes. Um, as well as my soundtracks, The Balance of Power, Kemet, and Titan, and Abyss, and who knows what next. Seventh Continent, Seventh Citadel. So thanks very much, Sire. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Again, thank you to our sponsors, Arcane Wonders. Check out their games at arcanewonders.com. And, of course, you can still late pledge now if you – Miss the Game Topper 3.0 Kickstarter. You can still get in on it at GameToppersLLC.com or the late pledge button right on the Kickstarter campaign page. And with that, go ahead and send us out, Sir Badger. We're so glad we had this time together. And now it's time to go. It won't be long until we have another show So keep us in mind, get online Berkey and Badger will be back in no time Woohoo!